قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد In our previous session we commenced with a discussion about the current situation of the Muslim Ummah we gave a brief analysis of the situation that the Ummah is facing we spoke about this unity that is inevitable in the Ummah, yet the need to make an effort to establish unity. And we came to the end of our discussion where we spoke about ISIS and how or what should be our reaction to what we are seeing before us. We would like to conclude this discussion in our session today, inshallah. We also narrated an incident and the purpose of narrating this incident is that as ordinary Muslims we need to know that our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his zealousness of saving the Ummah from deviation has given this Ummah beautiful guidance. Such guidance that whenever we are faced with a situation we can look back in our history and search for solutions from our history. We need to understand that a nation that ignores its history is doomed to repeat the wrongs that were committed in the past. I would like to represent to you some predictions of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he has made mention of in his ahadith. Jabir ibn Abdullah reports that a person came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at Jarana on his way back from the battle of Hunayn and there was in the clothes of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu some silver, some wealth which was spoils of war the Prophet وسلم, took a handful out of that and bestowed it upon the people. A man came to the Prophet and said to him, Ya Muhammad, in an abusive way, Adil, do justice. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, said to him, Waihak, wow be upon you. Who would do justice if I do not do justice? And you would be very unfortunate and a loser if I do not do justice. Meaning that you trust me with the revelations that come from Allah, but you do not want to trust me with the little wealth that is before me. So you would be very unfortunate and a loser if you do not do justice. If I do not do justice. Upon this, Umar ibn al-Khattab said, O Prophet of Allah, permit me to kill this hypocrite. Upon this, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, May there be protection of Allah. People would say that I kill my companions. This man, firstly, the first lesson here we learn, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not eager to kill people that even were abusive to him, in spite of knowing that this person was from among the hypocrites. In fact, he went to the extent of even calling him that the people would say, I kill my companions. Rasulullah had actually regarded him to be his companion. This man, Rasulullah then said, this man and his progeny, from his progeny there will be people who would recite the Quran, but it would not go beyond their throat. And 
they would swerve, they would distract, and they would deviate from the Quran and from deen just as an arrow goes through the prey. And there are many other ahadith about this person or groups of people that will be from the progeny of this man. Because this, he was the pioneer who tried to be over smart by advising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be fair and they show themselves as good and pious people. So this man tried to show himself as a good and pious person that he wants to advise the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be just. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that from his progeny will be people, they will appear when the Ummah will be disunited. It is that people from his progeny will appear when the Ummah will be disunited, meaning possibly in the era that we are living in. Today the Muslim Ummah is most disunited than ever before. There is no tolerance left for other views Instead of inviting Muslims to common platforms, there are scholars of different views who openly abuse others who have different views and claim that they are the only ones on truth. That is, that they are the only ones for whom the Jannah is. Jannah of Muslims on the right path and to be entered into Jannah on the day of, Jan of, the day of judgment. Similarly, we find narrated by Yusayr ibn Amr. He said, I asked Sahal ibn Hunayf, did you hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying anything about a group of people? He said, I heard him say, I heard him saying while pointing his hand towards Iraq. There will appear in it, that is in Iraq, some people who will recite the Qur'an, but it will not go beyond their throats. And they will go out, that means leave Islam as an arrow darts through the praise body. Also narrated by Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily there would arise from my ummah, after me a group of people, who would recite the Qur'an, but it would not go beyond their throats. And they would pass clean through their religion just like the arrow passes through the prey. And they would never come back to it. They would be the worst among the creation. These are hadith narrated by Bukhari. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri says, There will appear some people among you whose prayer will make you look down upon yours. And whose fasting will make you look down upon yours. They will recite the Qur'an which will not exceed their throats. Also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a description of them is that they will be ahdathul asnan, young, young people, sufahaul ahlam, people that will have amazing dreams. وَيَقُولُونَ خَيْرُ قَوْلُ الْبَرِيَةِ And they will be having the best of speech and slogans. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also said that outwardly they will be looking good. Now my beloved friends, without passing judgment on any group, on the one hand we have the beautiful example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was not prepared to cause harm to a person that showed total dishonor and disrespect to him. In the incident of the munafiq, Rasulullah even said, do not cause harm to even Abdullah ibn Ubay. He said, leave him lest the people say that Muhammad kills his companions. In fact, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling a munafiq his companion. The statement he made was punishable 
but yet the prophet did not execute it lest it engenders wrong perceptions which could be exploited as propaganda material. The Prophet ﷺ was even prepared to perform his janazah salah, but was stopped through wahiba Allah. If this is the prophetic example, what can one say about a Muslim killing another Muslim who simply does not share the same methodology? We as Muslims sometimes take strong exception when we are labeled as violent and fanatical. But in all honesty, are we guilty? Do we stand rightfully accused? How many of our own have we killed? This is the one aspect that we need to keep in mind. The second aspect that we also need to keep in mind is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us a warning of a description of a people that would come and that would appear during the end of times, especially at the time when the Muslim Ummah will be facing great disunity. Their call would look good. Ahdathul Asnan, there will be people that will be young. Sufahaul Ahlam, they will have great vision. They will have dreams of establishing whatever they wish to establish. They will be speaking the best of speech. Their slogans will be beautiful. Now, my beloved friends, these examples that I have presented for you should be a measure to measure our reaction to what we are seeing before us in the world. Stay tuned. Inshallah, in the, after the break, we will come to a conclusion of this discussion of ours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As I have made mention in the first discussion that we had last week, that the topic that I have chosen is a very sensitive topic. It is a very, very, very sensitive discussion. It is a discussion that is at the heart of most Muslims due to the chaos and the confusion and the difficult situation that we are faced with as a Muslim. My discussion in no way is addressing those people that are standing up to defend their religion, to defend the invasion of their countries, the occupied territories. The discussion with regards to Gaza and Palestine is a very simple discussion. It is a straightforward discussion. There is a group of people that have occupied another land and the people that are standing up have a legitimate right to stand up against this invasion. However, the situation in Syria and Iraq is much more confusion. There is very much more confusion. And there is no black and white about it. And in the events that have led up to what we see today, the emergence of a group that seem to be calling towards establishing a Khilafah. On the one hand, we spoke about the nostalgia that people are experiencing that maybe this is what we were all waiting for. Because remembering of the good times of the Ottoman Khilafah, there is also that it is about time that somebody stood up against the West and we want to support them because here's a group that apparently seems to be standing up against the West. There are also those that are looking at this whole situation with circumspect and are also saying this might be a conspiracy. They might be supported by our own enemies. Allah knows best. 
However, before the break, I had given you examples from the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the actions and the seerah of Rasulullah regarding his enemies. And I've also given you about certain predictions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and descriptions of people that will come at the time which is close to the end of times and especially at the times when the Muslims are faced with this disunity. Now comes the crucial question. What do you and I do? The fact of the matter is that we are in an unfortunate situation of not knowing. All the news and information that you and I are receiving, be it the social media, be it the other medias, Western or whatever, there is one very important aspect about it, my beloved friends, and that is we are unable to verify the authenticity of what comes to us. We are unable to verify the authenticity of what comes to us. And the deen and the guidance of our religion is very clear. When you are given any information about anything, verify the facts. And the unfortunate situation that we are in is that we are unable to verify anything about these organizations. Whether they are right or whether they are a conspiracy. Whether the alleged modus operandi are truthful or whether it is fabrication. Whether their intentions are sincere or not. The fact of the matter is we do not know. And in a situation like this, my beloved friends, the safest is that we pause. We activate our pause button in passing judgment with regards to what is before us. And that is the religious guidance, the ahadith and the prophetic traditions give us that guidance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has very clearly said, at the time of fitna, the safest person is he who does not make mention or he who does not speak and he who does not make any judgments. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also said that at the time of disunity, at the time closing, close to the time of the end of times, there will be much haraj. And the companions asked, what is haraj? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, mass killing and lies. How can we verify the facts? And that is what I leave you with. However, it does not mean that we need not make an effort to verify the facts. We need to use all our means and energies to establish the facts. But as the facts stand before us, we are in no way of making informed opinions about the issue. In conclusion, what do we do? You will recall that we indicated that we make reference to it sometimes. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, has, has admonished us to engage in ibadah when scorn is poured upon him. Even in dire circumstances, he should not be forgetting Allah. It simply can be concluded that whatever our obligations are, they, our worship, cannot be left out. Our faraid cannot be forsaken. It is not negotiable. If we omit them and think that Allah will come to our assistance, we are afraid it is akin to wishful thinking. Utilize our resources intellectual and material, more strategically. There is a great need to channel our intellectual resources in areas that can research how we can apply the tenets of our deen in ways that are not compromising, yet contemporary. We should educate our masses 
And the first port of call is our media, our in educational institutions. The role of Muslim educations cannot be overemphasized. We have student populations that can perhaps grasp and understand the issues we have spoken about earlier. We need to invest in personnel who are sufficiently competent to carry out such tasks. If our children are not educated adequately and appropriately, we will have to deal with individuals who will argue why we are intolerant to people. Make excessive dua that Allah blesses us with wisdom and understanding and sincerity. A combination of these qualities will ensure that correct decisions are reached. And never underestimate the power of dua. In our situation, let's make dua for the ummah and the unity of the ummah and the victory of the ummah. And let's use our energies and channel our energies in many of the humanitarian efforts that are taking place in assisting our people. The fact of the matter is that in Iraq and in Syria, there are so many factions Notwithstanding the legitimacy of fighting against the oppressive regime, notwithstanding the legitimacy of fighting against an oppressive regime, there are so many different groups that are fighting against the oppressive regime, yet many of them are fighting among themselves. And this is the sad part of it. If we want to physically go and participate in that, what guarantee do we have that we are fighting on the right? Yes, assisting in the humanitarian efforts, there is absolute guarantee that our energies are used in the right channels. And that is the advice. In conclusion, I would like to relate an incident. Salahuddin Ayyubi was a great leader. And on one occasion, he was informed that the enemy ships are at sea about to attack the Muslim army. Salahuddin, army who, uh, Salahuddin Ayyubi, who was the commander of the army during the day, was a man who spent his nights in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he realized the situation is dire. He realized the situation is dire. And the night he went into the masjid and he remained in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and crying before Allah to assist the Muslims against this army that has messed its, all its energies to fight the Muslims. During the night, at the time of Tuhajjah, during the Fajr Salah, after the Fajr Salah, up until the Ishraq Salah, he cried before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he was leaving the masjid after the Ishraq Salah, he met a man that was walking past him. And Salahuddin Ayyubi, out of concern, said to the man, O oh, pious man, make dua. The situation for the Muslim ummah is critical. And the man said to Salahuddin Ayyubi, O oh, Salahuddin, the tears of the night has not gone to waste. The tears of the night has not gone to waste. It is recorded that not long after, news came that there was a severe storm that came and many of the enemy ships were destroyed. This is the power of dua. In the situation that we are, let's not forget our connection to Allah and ask refuge from Allah for ourselves and for the ummah at large to be saved from the dire situation that the ummah is facing. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري 
قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبط حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبط حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري